Hi everyone. Um, just thought I'd give you a little bit of an update. Lots been going on here. Um, combination of weathering, which I've done quite a lot on. Um, you can see added a fair bit uh, on the pylons, or the warp nacelle front edges, and a little bit under here. Painted on the lights. Here, added it the back as well, the sort of soot running lines there, and then quite a bit at the front here. You can see really added a fair bit um, of the space rust. Um, and then tonight, been really working a lot on the adding the rings sort of panel lines here. Um, so I spent a fair bit of time not sure in this lighting whether you can even see them or not, but on the rings. That's been a <laughs> been an adventure. Um, really uh, based on the printed out um, the Sinclair blueprint version. Um, of the top and the bottom of the primary hull here and then just uh, got it to be the right size um, print it out and then put in where my grid obviously where my grid lines are there uh, for a couple of purposes mostly this one's actually for the lines that I we can see I'm just starting here actually I'm not sure you can see that let me try um, there, yeah, you can see them a little bit there. Uh, the, I've done three of them so far. You can see where I've gone through on the edge, and then on the inside edge, where each of the sort of outward ray panel lines go. This I have to just take the eraser. So one of the things, um, and I've already done that on the sort of ring sides, um, and I'm not sure how much you're seeing that. They're very subtle ones, especially once you take the eraser to them. Um, you can see that they lose a little bit of their something like that. Just demonstrating. Make sure I keep it clean here. Eraser, nice and clean here. So what's happening is you're going to see a lot less um, here, but uh, but on an angle, um, on the right angles in the right light, you catch you catch the panel line, which is which is that's accurate. That in fact. Um, if you look at the production enterprise, you, they're hardly noticeable, actually, just in some some shots and in some angles. And for sure, if you look at the Smithsonian um, on their reference photos that they used, and, and certainly on what they they did, um, you know, it's obvious there. Um, but Anyway, that's what I'm working on. It's it's a fair bit of um, fair bit of work, and I'm, but I'm pretty so far pretty happy with the results. Um, it's a you know, it's a pretty big big thing to get out get out the pencil and start um, start doing that. But that's where where it's at, um, and it, I think it's important for the. You know, I really want this to be, it's a very realistic, obviously going for realism here above all else. Um, and so that's, that's one of the pieces here. Um, to do, you can see what I've done to get the shape that I want. I kind of bent, took a, a really stiff zip tie and just have it kind of bent into the shape that I want here. So it's kind of just was able to because these are very stiff. So it was able I was able to get kind of the the shape that I wanted. So then it's just a matter of just lining up and being able to just run my lines um, pretty straightforward. 
Now I just have to go through and do, I don't even know how many of them there are here, but quite a few. Really important to hold it pretty stiff. You don't want this shifting at all when you're doing your actual applying the line. So, you know, hold it nice and stiff. I give it a couple. Just like that. And then, and then as I say, knowing that, of course, it's going to, you know, you're going to be erasing that and it's not going to look that dark when it, when everything's said and done here. Um, but definitely, definitely works. I, I'm going with a really light pencil 4H. Um, the, I understand uh, when the very original model um, was built, and you actually used a 2B, but it's a much bigger model, of course. And so, if we were to go that soft of a pencil, it's gonna it's gonna be way too dark for this uh, for this scale. Um, so that's why I'm using 4H here and just giving it. And the thing with 4H, it's really nice, is it's a really hard lead, so it actually kind of almost engraves a little bit. Um, and that's why you get this kind of nice effect. I can erase it, but it's still on certain lights you see it. And that's really, I feel pretty accurate, um, to how those grid lines uh, look on that original enterprise. They're, they're hard. Those panel lines aren't, uh, terribly obvious to the point where I know on my 350, um, the new version, the 50th anniversary version, they released without the panel line, the, the original version of that, that one to 350 scale enterprise has built right into the the mold they actually have these grids um which incorrectly they have them raised which that, that's that's truly not the way that the enterprise model was but that's what they did um but on the new version they actually have taken that out because a lot of uh actually i'm not sure actually i'm not sure they filled or or whether they were ridges uh valleys I, i'm actually not sure about that but in any case people either were, were sanding and and filling <laughs> a combination thereof to get them um to get what they uh, to get rid of them and then so because they were drawn on so that that is so it's not accurate um that they would have any kind of up or down or anything like that it's not like these three rings these three rings have always had an indent and they've always had that tan color um in them and so that's that remains here if we look uh, you can still see the tan there. And those three, there was nothing's changed there. That's um, and not going to change. But it's the rest of the lines as I lay them down here that are going to um, going to give it just a little bit more of that that coloring. And it's okay actually. That the, it sort of gives it a little bit of that aged. Um, you know, it's part of what you <laughs> end up doing here with the weathering anyway is to kind of get a little bit of that. And and if you look at those seams. They kind of do have a sort of weird aged along the panel grid lines. Um, and so it actually kind of works using the, the eraser along. I just feel like that's a, a pretty good method. Um, that for me, it's really been working. Um, I use a pretty big, um, a pretty big compass, uh, which lets me get a really nice rock. So this is a really solid that doesn't budge um, and so I can set up my uh, with my 4h pencil in here and then um, and then uh, get it in, in the center I actually had I set up because I didn't want to damage here so I actually t taped that on to place here and had this as my center and was able to draw in my lines there and I, I would set up the, the grid actually actually used a another printout the same size that's this one and you can see I um, have it raised to the same height as it is on the actual model and so then when I would set up my center here and then to whatever my wherever my grid line is I got the right distance um, and so that's how I knew that I could get the right right location for those right location for the rings that worked out pretty good key there is um, uh, printing to get the printing size to be exactly the size of your dish. Um, I actually did it on the top side, this one first, because that one a hard edge, so it's very easy to see when I had it perfect. 
Um, and then, and then just use the same scale on the bottom. It's a little softer edge, so it's harder to tell, but I know that it's, it worked out perfect because I know where my lines came in are identical to the actual production version. So I know I got it kind of bang on there. Um, yeah, so that's, that's where that's at. Uh, so I'll finish up this one, um, this side here tonight, probably, and then, um, work on the top side. Uh, probably tomorrow and uh, yeah it's a fair bit of work there's, there's a there's a lot of lines I'm not sure how many that is but it's got to be I really don't know but maybe it's 10 degrees each one I'm not sure so it'd be like 30 36 I'm not sure anyway it's a lot uh, actually I can tell you one two three four five okay so there's eight per quarter eight Per quarter, is that right? Yes, eight per quarter. So this is thirty-two. So thirty-two. Yep. So thirty-two lines on each side, going out that way. And I've got four done. <laughs> so a little bit ahead. But uh, now that you got the ruler set up and everything, that, that was half the battle. Was just um, getting the ruler and getting it kind of form fitted properly so that I uh, have the curve in there proper. That's once that's all set, it's pretty easy now. Um, then just kind of go along and do that. Anyway, just thought I'd give you an update. Um, it's really coming along. Um, once this is really the final stage, unless I add a little bit of the green algae um, weathering on the dish, which I I may do. Um, I just use some uh, pastel, use some pastels, and just kind of lay it in there a little bit on the top part, especially, and on the front facings um, we'll see I'll definitely lay down actually I will put in the tan there's actually a sort of a, a really faint tan on the top side um, the primary hall there's a sort of a tan band um, sort of painted and you know, I'll have oh, my grid lines on there and I'll be able to mask off for that and just lay down a little bit of that that'll definitely do um, and so then I you know so We'll see. It's a work in progress here. Um, I am trying, as I say, to get as much realism as I can. Um, and so to get there, uh, I probably will add that too. But you can also see, um, I don't know if you can see it here, but I added my little, uh, on the little tip of that, I've added the hall color and then the little red tip. I don't know if you can see that. Can you see that? Um, yeah, anyway, that's uh, to get it, that little extra little bit of realism there, because um, that's actually the way that looks. So, yeah, I'll keep you posted here, um, and I'll let you see here probably near the end when I get this, this side done. Working on the grid lines on the top of the primary hall tonight, and uh, just have the next ring set up, I thought it picture show it and they're each they're in six and a half millimeters each time so I always do a first time that and a second time a little bit darker that's what it looks like um, so I'll do the next uh, couple here uh, there's well two left it's just a matter of moving my pencil up the compass a bit just like this right there just want to get you want to just compensate for that increase in height as the hull kind of comes in just going to adjust for that. Give us the seven, the six and a half mils actually. That kind of thing. That looks 
pretty good. I'm going to just extend this up just a little bit. Always a bit nerve wracking. Um, anytime you're sort of drawing on your all that hard work of the painting, but. A little bit too far in. Hold on a second. There. And what I normally do is just check the other side too, make sure we're still just a little bit. The line there too. And I'm going to measure that. And then I'm going to check on my I have my template still down here. Now the only thing is, yeah, it's getting a little too tight on that one. Let me just measure that, make sure. Just confirm where we're at on that one. So yeah, you can see the six and a half. And six and a half on that side, so this is perfect there. I've got my, you'll notice, <laughs> that's a, one of the, that's the pilot version of a nace of a Broussard collector front end there. That's my, I just have it placed over top of the bridge. Um, up a bit. I'm using a 4H. I think I mentioned that. The other part of the wall and then just loosen this up here. Let's enter the next one here, the final. compass but it's um, it's pretty pretty big it can do pretty large scale things and so which is great but um, just make sure that's at the right coming in properly there so I'm just going to do my confirmation measures here. It's easier to, if I had to erase those, I can erase them when they're that big. Oh, it gets a lot harder. Yeah, that's exactly right. one so let's just get that done that's gonna collide a little bit with my as expected it collides with the sort of bridge Yeah, 
well. So I think that's looking pretty good. Um, you can see the, let's move that more into the center there. So, um, pretty, uh, they're uh, again pretty dark right now. Um, they'll be, I'm obviously going to erase just like I did on the other side, so I can actually just show you what it looks like so you can see how it ends up looking on this side where uh, it's hardly noticeable actually unless you get it the right angle and the right lighting and then you can see see the difference so that's that's where and they're using the exact same technique so uh, we will uh, as this goes um, I did remove the <laughs> did remove my little dish there on the top front I don't decided a lot of risk of it getting crushed here as I was doing this work so that's not on there right now um, yeah, this came out just great. So it's just the right number to perfect uh, sizes for the rings there. I've got already my lines, so the deflector grid is there. I just uh, now need to take my, my little straight edge here. Um, which I have right here. And... Uh, And just do my 32 more lines, and you can see how I've got them. Um, I've already kind of got the ruler bent in the right shape of the saucer here. So I'll probably start with the first one that just comes out the center here. So just line up. I've got the, I did to use this, and just cut out just a little bit more around so I could then just grab each of my. So I have the inside parts, and then I just carried forward from the bottom where I already had my edges, so I'm not didn't have to redo anything on the outside edge because I want to actually have that consistent. Um, anyway, I wanted to match where the line is on the bottom and where it comes there along the front facing, and then all the way on the top as well. So it's all matches there. There, so just like that. Um, and then I'll just keep doing the rest of those guys. I might not take up all your time. You might just have through the magic of video editing, you'll just suddenly have it all done here. take a little bit of to really take that time to get it accurate and correct you want to definitely um, check your check everything twice and draw once at most put that over there so we're not It really helps having um, a really good flexible ruler, obviously, is really important in all of this. Um, would not be possible. I'm not sure. I mean, I'm sure it could be done the regular ruler, but you want it is just so much easier having it kind of shaped to the shape of the saucer. I suppose it could be done elsewhere, but if I had to recommend it would be to do it this way.
yeah so I'll just keep going with this um, and uh, probably circle back here to get it done and maybe even do a little bit of erasing um, and let you see what we end up with so just a quick update um, finished top part of the saucer getting um, my grid lines put on and erased so depending again on angle it either um, is hardly noticeable at certain angles and then if you get the right light you can definitely see the grid pattern pretty well so it's a pretty nice effect actually um, yeah really really happy with that and it kind of see the edges the panels map across and we get the same uh, same effect the underside as well so overall really happy with that um, uh, it's um, turned out all that I all that I wanted there so um, that opens it up for being able to add as I mentioned the other day I'm going to uh, I am going to put in the tan arc here so I'm gonna spray that in now that I've got the grid markings I can easily do that and uh, this will help in a lot of ways as well let me obviously be able to apply um, the decals a lot easier now with a lot more guide and just every all the decals actually go on a little bit easier but yeah that's where it's at just wanted to